Good evening, everyone. This is Cruz de la Cruz here with Stephen Fines here for another edition of ESW Saturday Night Fight Night. And we have quite a uh, night here in store for us, don't we, tonight, Stephen? Oh, absolutely. A great night of action here on ESW Saturday Night Fight Night. We're kicking things off here with tag team action, a number one contenders match here, if you will. The winner of this match will challenge the strongest men in the world at our next Showdown Showcase event, Homecoming, on December 23rd in Dallas, Texas. First out, we have Chaz Stevens in the red, Travis Logan in the blue, TBA, the best around. Right you are, Steven. These guys have only suffered one defeat since uh, coming here to ESW, and uh, they've been rather impressive. They're a very no-nonsense uh, type of team. Oh, right, you are a very no-nonsense type of team indeed. And pretty appropriate because the team they're facing is known for a lot of nonsense. But they did get the job done at ESW Manhattan Mayhem. I'm talking about the Moretti crime family. Oh, right, you are. They're riding a wave of momentum here that they haven't felt in quite some time. Oh, right, you are. I'm talking about Sergio and Lorenzo Moretti, the two knuckleheads of the Moretti crime family. They're, they're coming off that big victory in that six-man tag match against the Unit Club, finally ending the war between the Moretti crime family and the Unit Club, oh, and they feel vindicated. Oh, right you are, Stephen, and I'm sure that you know, Sophia would be pleased if her brothers came home with some gold just like her. Oh, absolutely, and yeah, right, like Cruz said, our new ESW Diamonds Division champion, Sophia Moretti, the head of the Moretti crime family, they now have gold and they want to add more and those tag team titles would look great in the graces of the Moretti crime family. All right, you are, Stephen. And we will be seeing Sophia in action later on tonight. And this should be quite a contest. These, these two teams have never faced each other. Never faced off one-on-one on, one on one before. And it looks like... Oh, wait a second. Oh, oh they started the match early, taking some sheep shots. Like I said before, TBA don't get paid by the hour. They want to get this over with. Ref finally ringing the bell here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, time is money. In TBA, they don't have time to be messing around. Oh, hit him with that Bruno pose. What do you think about oh, that? Oh, yeah. TBA with a little downtown Bruno Brown action. Fans of Bruno, I see. Our, our next level champion, downtown Bruno Brown, I might add. I heard Bruno wasn't pleased with our last set for the last fight night. He, he demanded another. I think yeah, he wanted better. He, because he he knew that he was he was having a match tonight and he didn't want to come out to some scrub scruffy looking set. <laughs> uh, for whatever reason, the higher ups here in ESW love Bruno. For whatever reason, Cruz, the reason the higher ups love Bruno Brown is because he brings in the De Niro. He does sell quite a bit of merch. I will give him that. Exactly. You know they and no stranger to De Niro is TBA who have been racking up. Lots of money here with these victories. March you are, Steven. He's taking it to Sergio, and Big Lorenzo tagged himself in there. This is going to be one, <coughs> one hell of a fight here. And Lorenzo grabbing Travis Logan and just drops him with a choke slam. Lorenzo trying to get the pin early here. Ref is obviously out of position here. Oh, absolutely, giving, giving Travis Logan a chance to recuperate. He drags him over to the corner, smashes him, and throws him. Nothing pretty about his offense whatsoever. It wasn't pretty about Lorenzo to begin with. He has a terrible haircut. Terrible haircut. Oh. Ill-fitting Ill clothes. I mean, <laughs> the, the guy, the guy's not put together. Oh man, too many cannolis. That's you. That's your right. Oh, big drop kick to poor Sergio. Lorenzo just powering him off. Oh. oh. Big shoulder tackle. Just threw his whole body into it. Used his whole body as a weapon. TBA have to find some way to combat Lorenzo's power here. Yeah, they might have him on the technical side, but as far as power goes, there's no competition. Oh, oh man, Travis Logan with some power of his own. Yeah, muscling him up there with a sit-out suplex. Oh. And now an edge of Matic. Oh, double foot to the arm. My goodness. Now just stomping him out. Anytime I see a move like that, it's just extra brutal. Because you're 
you're dialing in on that specific body part. Oh, absolutely. Oh, what a slam by Travis Logan on the big man, Lorenzo. Showing his power here. Now he sends him into the opposite corner here. Oh, Chaz with a cheap shot. Sends him back into the corner. Now a tag into Chaz Stevens. And a double team back body drop. That double team maneuver by the TBA. And now a knee to the face. And Lorenzo. Oh, fighting back here. Oh, man. Going to have to keep eyes in the back of his head. Chaz with some power. Owen just dropped oh. it down with a brain buster. Man, what a brain buster. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to stay on this big man and wear him down. Going for some type of inverted figure four here. Oh, he's got him in this. Oh, and he tapped out. He had to tap out. Sergio couldn't save him. Sergio was just too late, and Big Lorenzo just had to tap out. And TBA are your number one contenders to the tag team championships. And look at this wheelbarrow slam from earlier. And one thing about TBA I've seen since they've debuted, Steven, with the exception of the one match they lost, their matches are short. And, and, and sweet. Dominant. You know, like you said, they, domin they dominate their opponents. Their name isn't just a gimmick, it's a scientific fact. TBA, the best around. T TBA, going on to face the strongest men in the world at ESW Homecoming for the tag team titles. I can't wait. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for our next contest here. We have Diamonds Division action. It's Poderosa making her way out here with some, it uh, looks like some Captain Marvel themed gear here. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like Captain Marvel inspired gear here. You know, yeah, she, we haven't seen Poderosa here for a while, but she's looking to, looking to shake things up here tonight. But uh, I don't envy anybody who wants to come out and face Poderosa with that look on her face. Oh, not at all. But then again, I don't. Poderosa doesn't know what she has in store for her tonight because she's facing a debuting uh, uh, superstar that we've uh, we've been waiting for for quite some time. The impending arrival of the Outcast, Bree George, here tonight. Oh, I'm so excited here for finally the debut. The ESW debut of the Outcast, Bree George. We've seen the teasers for weeks, and now she is here. She has arrived. The Outcast, Bree George, is on ESW Saturday Night Fight Night. And she should, and I believe now that she's arrived, I believe she's going to have quite an impact here in the Diamonds Division. Wouldn't you say, Stephen? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's no one like her in the Diamonds Division. She is a one-of-a-kind talent. And now she's finally arrived here in ESW. And I think Sophia Moretti, and, you know, better keep an eye on this one. Oh, right, you are. The entire Diamonds division has now been put on notice now that Bree George the Outcast has finally arrived. And I hope Poderosa knows what she has coming. I don't think she does. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Bree George finally here in ESW, right here on Saturday Night Fight Night. Now, this should be quite a matchup. I'm very excited. Oh, absolutely. Look at the whole crowd is going crazy here for the outcast. The fireflies are out, it seems. And let's get this Diamonds Division action started. We have quite a few Diamonds Division matches tonight. I think we have three. This is just the first one, so it's going to be a good night. Oh, I love it, Cruz. I knew love you a, would. I'd love a good Diamonds Division match. All right, here we go, guys. One-on-one -on -one action. Poderosa debuting Bree George. Here we go. Oh. And Poderosa out the gate here. Welcome to ESW, Bree George. Oh, man, big stinger splash. Big splash by Poderosa. 
the powerful and beautiful Poderosa. But now she's getting strikes put upon her by Bree George. Oh, big elbow drop. Driving it into the heart of Poderosa. And now just slamming her into the mat. Again, unrelenting. Now sends her into the corner here with a big knee. My goodness. Went for a bulldog, but oh, gets countered by Poderosa. She said, not today. She was going for that Muerte bomb, but Bree George counters with a back body drop into some stops. And now Poderosa rolling to the outside, trying to take a quick breather. Oh, Bree George is taking it straight to her here. Big double axe handle from the ring apron. Throws her back into the ring. Up to the top. Looks like she's sizing her up for something. Oh, but oh, punches her and throws her off the turn up the turnbuckle. Halfway across the ring. Such power by Poderosa. Oh, but power by Bree George as well. Not to be outdone. Oh, went for that spinning back fist. Now Bree Jordan with a side Russian leg sweep into a series of right hands. Oh, right up to the top rope. This didn't pay off last time. Let's see if it does this time. Like she's sizing her up here. And a big double axe handle. Kick to the gut. Oh, what a oh. swinging pile driver. Oh, my, my goodness. God. Into the cover. Did you see the torque on her neck? Oh, man. That was nasty and, and brutal. It. Your winner, the outcast, Bree George, in dominant fashion. And let's take another look at this. Jesus. Oh. Oh, that's oh. Si it's like a sidewinder oh. pile driver. I don't even want to look at it. It's nasty. Brutal. That's all. That's one thing about our diamonds. They have some rough finishes. Yeah, they, they don't take it easy for sure. Your winner, the outcast, Bree George, in her debut match. And up next, we have some one-on-one -on -one action, and I cannot wait. I'm on the edge of my seat first out. We have one half of Triple X here. We have Mark Well Dunlap, and this this is first one on one match in quite some time. And you might you gotta wonder if some of that rust is gonna show itself. Oh, we'll just have to wait and see, Stephen. As we saw, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, Twista had a one on one match with Ryan Evans. It didn't go so well. Yeah, no, it didn't. And um, you know, knowing his opponent here tonight, I don't know if it's gonna go so well for Mark Well Dunlap because he's going one on one with the next level champion the greatest superstar in ESW history I'm talking about downtown Bruno Brown if you say so Steven I'll give it to you he does bring in some revenue for us he did get us some sponsors but I don't think he can I don't think he's any better than El Diablo here Mark well done last. okay well answer, answer me this here who of these two people, who guest hosted the Tonight Show in 1996? Bruno Brown. Exactly. My point stands. Marquel was like 12. Hey, I'm just saying, downtown Bruno Brown is the reason why we have all this influx of money coming in ESW, so let's put some respect on his name. How about that? <laughs> if you say so. If you say so. Look at him. He's magnificent. From Portland, Oregon. There he is with Tiffany Owens in that ESW Next Level title. Beautiful championship. Looks great around his waist. I thought you were going to say a beautiful championship on a beautiful man. Well, I mean, I could say that, and I should say that, so I am going to say that. A beautiful belt around a beautiful man's waist with a beautiful talent agent at his side, Tiffany Owens. Just gorgeousness all around. Right you are, Stephen. This should be quite a matchup here. Bruno Brown, you know, and if Dunlap can defeat him, that's definitely going to put him in the title contention for that next level title. And that's a big if, though. 
if he can defeat Bruno Brown, which he's not going to. Dunlap's a former world champion. Former tag team champion. Yeah, but does he have an Emmy? No, Bruno Brown does, though. Neither here nor there. Dunlap coming out hot here. Takes him, takes Bruno Brown down to the mat. Now he's showboating here, and that's going to cost him. Bruno Brown takes him down with a big DDT. A float over. Let's go, Bruno. And a big neck breaker. Oh, with a big poke to the eye. Now, it, the way I'm looking at this, And a Steven, stun gun! You know, Mark, Mark Wells coming in this match with nothing to lose and everything to gain. Oh, absolutely. Bruno, on the other hand, has everything to lose. Well, the title's not on the line. No, but his pride. And you know that's important to Bruno. Oh, absolutely. I mean, whose who's pride isn't important to themselves? Uh, maybe uh, Brother Isaiah... Brother uh, Eli, they don't Levi. count. They're 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 Cro Magnon Neanderthals. <laughs> they don't count. We haven't seen they're them in quite a people. while. I'm glad yeah. we haven't seen yeah, them. Yeah, I, I don't know if I want to see the chosen ever again. All right, here we go, guys. Bruno mounting some offense here. Takes him down here. Oh, crunching him up. Oh, gotta love it. Bruno firmly in the driver's seat here. Oh, oh! And it just dumps him on his he, head. He calls that the BB suplex. The BB suplex. The Bruno back suplex. And look at him just chilling out. What a man! What a guy! You know Bruno's done some voiceover work too. He was. He was in Fern Gully Five. <laughs> oh, oh what a in. step up kick! Right to the face. Now, oh, headbutt. Be careful. That's a national treasure, Markwell. The, the crowd going wild for Dunlap here, for El Diablo. And oh, wait a minute. You better not. No. Oh, my. He just hit Bruno with the Bruno Driver 94. How dare you? But Bruno kicks out. He didn't, he didn't get all of it. He couldn't have got all of it. Hurricane Rana by Dunlap. Come on, Bruno. Come on. Oh, need of that moneymaker. That indeed is a moneymaker. Oh, missed the big elbow. And now Bruno's going to show him how it's done. The Bruno drive. Oh, wait a second. Oh. Not today. Takes him down with a clothesline. I think Dunlap may have him here. He may this may be Dunlap's match to win. I hate to say you're right, but maybe so. Oh, who am I to doubt Bruno Cruz? Sidesteps that plancha. Markwell got nothing but Matt. Very thin Matt. Very thin Matt. And now he's going to crunch him up once again. What a maneuver by Bruno Brown. And now he goes up top here. And a big drop kick. Taking Markwell down. Wiping the sweat from his brow. Oh, and now, oh, that BB suplex again. Bruno back. Oh, man. Oh, kick to the gut. Oh, Dunlap missed that clothesline. And now Bruno's going to take advantage. Dunlap. You see, Markwell has all this experience over Bruno, and yet Bruno has been holding his own in this match. Give him credit when credit's due. Well, he just ate a DDT. Oh, wait a minute. Tiffany distracting Dunlap here. I don't. I can't say I blame the guy. Now Bruno going to take advantage here. Lifts him up here. Hits a neck breaker. Beautiful neck breaker into the cover. Oh, but Markwell getting the shoulder up. Oh, kick to the face. Now taking him down with a series of clotheslines. Oh, man, big splash in the corner. Markwell on fire here. Oh, nip up. Here we go. Let's go, El Diablo. 
Markwell all fired up here tonight. Oliver Bruno blocks that punch. And now he's going to set him up here. He's going to show him how it's done. The Bruno driver, 94, drops him right on the top of his head. And that could be it. And now Bruno into the cover. And that's it. The next level champion, downtown Bruno Brown, with the big victory here tonight on Fight Night. And let's take another look here. Can't get enough Bruno. That Bruno back suplex. Uh, hitting, hitting his own move on him, the Bruno Driver 94. But then Bruno showed him how it's done. That Bruno Driver 94 ended this whole match. Right you are, Steven. What a contest here this time tonight you know and Bruno has to be feeling good wait a minute it's the phantom the phantom's here and Bruno doesn't even know it yet oh phantom's got a chair no oh. this is a receipt from the last episode of fight night I think you're right now he's trying to lodge that chair in the corner Bruno fighting back fight back Bruno you got this all oh, phantom into his own chair this, Br this serves him right. Br Bruno don't know what to do here. He's completely at a loss. Well, it's like he's, he snuck up on him without, you know, without Bruno even knowing. That's what, it seems like that's what the Phantom does. He's very, uh, very, uh... He's a very sneaky man. Sneaky man, yes. Very, very sneaky. I was going to say magical, but I don't know if that's the right word. Mystical. And now it looks like Bruno's looking for something. Oh, he's got a ladder. Wedges it there. Slides underneath here. Now back on, the, Phantom. back on the attack to the Phantom. This didn't turn out the way the Phantom intended. Oh, into, into the ladder. Oh, drops him right on that ladder. Go, Bruno, go. Bruno firmly in control here. Oh, big neck breaker. What's Phantom got in mind here? There's no telling. I have no idea what goes on in Phantom's head. Oh! He just, oh my god, he just threw him on the steel steps. Bruno, oh, headbutt. Bruno, Bruno slides into the, oh, now he's running away. Get out of here, Bruno. Oh man! All right, man. What a what a ending to that last match. The Phantom coming out of nowhere. I I I, I don't think him and Bruno are done with each other just yet. I don't think so either. But here we have some Diamonds Division action, and here we have Ricky Riot, who made her date, who made her return, should say, at Manhattan Mayhem, answering Chanel Carter's open challenge and. It shocked the entire ESW universe that she was back so soon after such a gruesome injury. Oh, right you are, Steven. And she is, and with that victory over Chanel, has catapulted her right into the title contention. Oh, absolutely. I have it on good authority from the board of directors that at homecoming, uh, there's going to be a fatal four-way match for the ESW Diamonds Division Championship. Sophia Moretti will defend her championship Madison Shaw has invoked her rematch clause. Chanel Carter has demanded a title shot, and Ricky Riot defeating Chanel, Car or Chanel Carter has earned herself a title shot. So all four ladies are going to do battle for the Diamonds Division Championship at homecoming in Dallas, Texas. Oh, that should be quite a contest, Stephen. Oh, absolutely. And there's Madison Shaw, the former Diamonds Division champion, and she is none too happy about losing her championship oh. in, at Manhattan Mayhem. Oh, not at all. She is not pleased. This is the first time in months she's come to the ring without gold. Yeah, you can just see the sour look on her face as she heads to the ring here to face Ricky Riot one on one. Just showing your disdain for the ESW universe. Interesting by their absent absence, Unit Club have not joined uh, Madison in any capacity here tonight. I don't think they want to show their face after their loss at Manhattan Mayhem. I mean, that was a huge loss for the Unit Club. Oh, it was a 
bad night for the whole team. Now we have Ricky Wright here going one on one with Madison Shaw, the Black Mamba. Now just think if Ricky can pick up the victory here, what kind of momentum that's going to give her going into homecoming? Oh, absolutely. Huge, huge momentum. And I, and I think Madison needs the win to get some momentum back. I think this is a must win for both ladies. Oh, what a Fez press into some right hands by Ricky Riot. Oh, that step up Superman by Madison. Man, that's only by Madison. She has that MMA background. Yeah, just ground and pound and Ricky Sexton there. Oh, right into an arm bar. Yeah, it's like you said, that MMA training. Ricky fighting out of it. Oh, good God. Just punches to the ear. That's an unorthodox offense. Yeah, it's it's that it's that training that the more unorthodox offense. Look at that. It's that training from the inevitable. That page turner right there. Oh. And an arm drag there by Ricky Riot. I think Ricky Steamboat would be proud of that arm drag. Well, absolutely. And a big power bomb folding Ricky up. Ricky fighting back. Madison can't seem to get much uh, put together here tonight. Well, absolutely. Ricky Wright's just been a completely different performer since she returned. Oh, unpredictable. And I think that's one thing that... Oh, man. An eat defeat by Madison Shaw. That's one thing the rest of these diamonds in the division are going to have to uh, learn to deal with. Yeah, this is going to be a, a <coughs> thing to contend with is that Ricky Wright, she's just unpredictable. This isn't Ricky Sixton anymore. Absolutely not. She's been completely embraced by the inevitable. Now she got her up, hits the clash. Ricky just stringing the offense together here. The crowd loving it. The crowd firmly behind Ricky Riot here. And now she hits her with the shadow of the moon into the cover. Madison Shaw just getting the shoulder up at this last second. Oh, again. An, oh, oh, countered out of it. Countered with a hip toss. Now it's just big stomps to that injured orbital socket. It can't be 100%. That's one thing about Ricky. She's, she's always, she's always going to have that. Oh, went for the snake bite, but Ricky ducks under. Oh, it's another shadow of the moon. Uh, that mask is just like a bullseye for any opponent. Absolutely, but there with the three count, Ricky Riot with a huge victory here on Fight Night. Oh, the crowd erupting here. Let's take another look here. I mean, I, I'd, I'd say this is an upset. You could say that. You know, if this was Ricky Sexton, but Ricky Riot is some other kind of animal altogether. Entity. The entity, that's a good way to describe it. Into the shadow of the moon for the victory. Ricky Ryan, big victory here tonight. Let's get ready for our next match. All right, guys, more Diamonds Division action coming up right now. First coming out, the new ESW Diamonds Division champion, Sophia Moretti. Man, look at that title on her. Oh, there's a title there? <laughs> I didn't notice the title there for a second. I was a bit mesmerized by uh, something else. But yes, the new Diamonds Division champion here, the head of the Moretti crime family, Sophia Moretti. And that title looks great on her cruise. And she's four, here to take the on to the, the leader of Hollywood, Chanel Carter. Hill, Chanel coming off that loss at uh, Manhattan Mayhem. Man, they definitely want to try and uh, you know, come back here with a victory. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, at the expense of the Diamonds Division champion. And oh my God, I love it when she does that. But yes, yeah, Sophia Moretti here. Non title action here, but this is more about pride than anything else. Like you said, Steven, Sophia, Chanel, Madison, and Ricky will all be in that fatal four way for Sophia's title at ESW Homecoming. Oh, absolutely. That's going to be one hell of a match there. Here comes, here comes Sophia Moretti's opponent here tonight, the leader of Hollywood, 
Chanel Carter, and this time she has the rest of Hollywood with her. BYT and Monica Hampton. Look at her talking trash. She's definitely feeling herself here tonight. Like like you said, Cruz, she was she she's coming off that big loss in Manhattan Mayhem, and she wants to get the the tide turned back the other way. Because outside of that loss, she has been dominant in the Diamonds division. Oh, right you are, Steven. And tonight she brought reinforcements to make sure that happens. Absolutely. That was some great reinforcements there. BYT and Monica Hampton. All right, guys. More Diamonds Division action coming up. Here we go. I can't wait. It's always good to see Hollywood out. I'm always, a little, oh. I'm always a little scared and excited at the same time. Oh, absolutely. That's the best way to feel, though. <laughs> I'm afraid BYT might shank me or something. Here we are. But Sophia Moretti, the Diamonds Division champion, and Chanel Carter, the glamorous one, the leader of Hollywood. But, Let's go. But then again, I, I think Sophia probably has brass nuts somewhere. Yeah, you you don't want to get on, on Sophia's bad side. That's for sure. Could you imagine Sophia and BYT in a bar fight? Oh, man. Oh, man. Sophia ducked to the outside. Chanel talking smack. Ooh, Chanel Carter's not playing around here tonight. No, Monica Hampton getting involved here, throwing Sophia back into the match, into the ring here. Big oh. German. Chanel Carter with a Fez press with some right hands to Sophia Moretti. Now just stomping away here. Trying to prove a point to the Diamonds Division champion that she deserves to that title and not her. And in Chanel's defense, Chanel's had been on way more of a win streak here than the actual champion. You could definitely say that. Oh, coming off the rope there with a big uh, arm drag. Yeah, you definitely could make that argument. That Chanel Carter has, has been more dominant than the actual champion. So... We, we shall see who will walk out with the title at, uh, at homecoming. That should be quite a contest. And now Chanel taking Sophia down here. Oh, kick Looks like she's going to set up for that glamour kills. Nope. Just oh, hit her with, just hit her with a drop kick. Wearing her down a little bit more. Now she might be looking for glamour kills. Oh, Sophia. Getting that, out of the way. It's that move that took Ricky out for so many weeks. We haven't seen Filthy Vaughn since she hit her with it. And oh, a Jersey Turnpike that by might be Sophia it. Moretti. This could be it, but no. Chanel getting the shoulder up. Not even a one count on that. Sophia in disbelief. Hits her with a back elbow. And now Sophia is going up to the second rope. Oh. That splash to the lower back of Chanel Carter. I don't think she got all of it. Jeez. She got enough. And now, oh, looks like she's going for glamour kills of her own. Oh, my God. And now she just stares down on the rest of Hollywood, daring them to get involved. And she might want to stop paying more attention to Chanel Carter and get the cover. She could have got more than just that. She didn't waste her time. Here we go, Chanel into the corner. Oh. You know, dragging her to the ropes. Oh, man, all the way to the outside. And now this spills out to the outside. We've seen a lot of that here lately. Oh, man, big back suplex. The ring's just not big enough to contain all the action crews. And this that oh. those double kicks. We've seen that before by Chanel Carter. And now Sophia battling back. Monica almost got involved but thought better of it. Sophia better watch, watch her back here. Yeah, she's surrounded on both sides by Holly Hood. And another Thess press into some more hands. Some more right hands. Oh! oh <clears throat> glamour kills on the outside. My goodness. Now Chanel Carter just ends right back into the ring. And 10. 
And she takes the count out victory. Very smart. My goodness. And this has definitely got to put some momentum in her in her uh, in her line of sight here going into the ESW homecoming here in a few weeks. Absolutely. Takes that count out victory. That glamour kills on the outside, this man. Brutal, brutal finish. Here is your winner, Sean. There we go, guys. Hollywood, victorious here tonight. Chanel Carter. Decisive win. All right, guys, it's time for our main event here. We have a rematch from ESW Manhattan Mayhem. The best of the best in the world, Juan Soto, taking on his half-brother, Eric Acosta, again here tonight. And I believe, you know, after that showcase that they put on in, in Manhattan Mayhem, I think the board of directors the will be looking at this match very four. closely Maybe as to who, who might be getting the next title Jerry. opportunity. Oh, right you are, Cruz. Yeah, they're, they're going to be paying very close attention to this match. But, yeah, this is a rematch from Manhattan Mayhem. Those these, those these two guys, they tore the roof off of the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City with that false count anywhere match. Now, tonight, tonight's not false count anywhere, but I, there doesn't mean it won't be as brutal. No, right you are, Steven, right you are. You know, and Soto came out ahead on that match. And I, I mean, I believe if he can win two in a row, you know, that's definitely going to put him in the in top contention for Bishop's World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I hate to give credit where credit's due to that lousy, no good, rotten Jerry Fishman, but ever since, ever since hitching his wagon to Juan Soto, Juan has been able to, uh, Juan's been able to climb the ranks here in ESW and get himself into title contention. So. I mean, who's to say he didn't make the right choice? Right you are, Steven. And I think what Fishman does is he puts Soto in the right opportunities. You know, he, like, Soto doesn't have to worry about that anymore. He's got Fishman doing all that for him. Soto just has to show up. Oh, absolutely. But speaking of showing up here, Eric Acosta coming off that loss at Manhattan Mayhem to his own brother Juan Soto. He's looking to avenge that loss here tonight. Showing up here in the main event of ESW Saturday Night Fight Night. And Acosta, he, he's got a lot to prove here. You know, he, he put out a heck of a showing in Manhattan Mayhem. You know, just came up short. You know, in that match. It wasn't a one-sided contest. It was back and forth through the whole match with these guys. You know, Acosta put the Soto through two tables. Slammed him into the ladder. Busted him wide open. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Eric Acosta, he, he really took it to Juan Soto and really gave him a, a the fight of his life. But, I mean, Juan Soto gave it right back to him. I mean, putting him, sending him through the flaming table with a German suplex. I mean, good Lord. And he hit him with, I think, five go to hell. Five, yeah. That was just a ridiculous amount. Yeah, it was it was a fight for the ages. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it on our YouTube channel for sure. But tonight, the rematch. We have Juan Soto and Eric Acosta one-on-one -on -one in the main event of ESW Saturday Night Fight Night. Fishman out here, keeping a close eye on everything. Soto coming out the gate strong with drop kicks. You know, a side Russian leg sweep by the best in the world into the cover. And that's one thing about Soto. He's a student of the game. You know, that best of the world moniker he, he has, you know, he, he doesn't just think it's a t-shirt. You know, he believes it. You know, he's won world championships everywhere he goes. You know, he's a, you know, tactician in the ring. You know, oh man, Acosta just coming out of nowhere. Big flying forearm. And I'd say Acosta is more or less the the yin to Juan's yang, you know, he's he's the opposite about his offense. You know, he's you know he's high impact. All right, you are, and I mean, just go look at his finish to uh, prove that point. The strikeout, he can hit that move out of nowhere. Oh, he can. He you know, it it literally comes out of nowhere. 
Now it looks like he's putting the hurt on one here with a big Northern Light suplex. Now sends him into the ropes. Oh, missed that big drop kick. Yeah, Juan sidesteps it there. Looks like he was going to go for a dragon suplex. It cost a power and out of it. Oh, with a judo toss. And that's one thing about these two. As far as their power and... Oh, there oh, it is. there's the strikeout out, out of, of nowhere. nowhere. Like we were saying, he pulls that out of nowhere. And Soto got to the ropes. Just... Man, he he was lucky. He was such ring awareness there. Oh, man, that was, like you said, pure luck right there, Steven. If that would have been flush in the middle of the ring, it could have been all oh. over. And a big Uranagi into the cover again, but one, getting the shoulder up. Oh, man, that, that like, that, I was, I'm still, you know, blown away by that last series of events here. Soto sweeping the leg out. Let's see, I have in mind here. Drop toe hold into the STF. Toss it too close to the ropes. And now he's got him up here for a go to hell. Oh, man. Opens him back up into a cover again. But Eric Acosta getting the shoulder up won't be defeated again. What's Soto doing here? Looks like he's grabbing a chair. The, I mean, this isn't no DQ like it was at, at Manhattan Mayhem. Costa coming back. Big DDT into the cover. Juan kicking out. Oh, countered that. Scorpion death drop. Him back elbow into a clothesline. Eric Acosta firing back here. Firmly in the driver's seat now. Oh man. You can see that cut on Acosta just reopened up. Now he's feeling himself here tonight. Juan rolling out to the outside to catch a breather. Sends him back into the ring. And a kill shot lariat. And that's what put him down in Manhattan Mayhem. Oh, going for a chair again. What's he have in mind here? There's no telling what he what kind of intentions he has. Oh, just smacks him right in the head. Fishman. But Fishman. Fishman distracting the referee. Now Acosta grabs the chair. What big time Larry at turning across the inside out. Fishman on the apron again. Juan back to the outside. Grabbing that chair once again. I don't think Acosta sees it. I don't think Acosta notices. He just wants Juan back into the ring. Oh, oh blast right in front of the referee. That's a DQ. It's a blatant DQ. No, it doesn't look like Soto is fit. Wait a minute. Who's he signaling in the He's calling down for somebody, but Eric Acosta fighting back. The Summit? Wait a second. That's TBA. That's TBA. What are they doing here? Looks like Soto has some insurance. They're all attacking Eric Acosta. Has this been a big coup the entire time? I think so. It looks like TBA and Juan Soto are all on the same nasty, vile page. My goodness, what a turn of events here. Acosta with the win, but Soto has definitely come out on top here tonight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for ESW Saturday Night Fight Night. We'll join you next week, next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday on ESW Rise for Cruz de la Cruz. And I'm Stephen Fine saying like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thank you and good night.